Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Is it a good morning? It's a great morning. It's a good day to die too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad because we have a choice and we'll learn or we'll end up getting burned. Amen. You're not willing to learn. You're going to get burned. I'm going to guarantee it 100%. Nobody walks away. You're going to eventually touch something that ain't right. You're going to eventually agree with something that ain't right. And you're going to get burned. But the word says something very powerful. All things can work to the good. But those who love the Lord, that means if you love him, you obey him. Amen. And are called according to his purpose. There are those who are called, fulfilling the call, not chosen yet. There's a difference. And in this right now where we're dealing with many, the things that's going on, it's just phenomenal to me. I mean, right now we got people, you know, the enemy's trying to bring fear of this virus. Like I said before. Sounds like a bad drink, you know? Anyways, the enemy brings fear. Fear is an emotion. Fear is a what? An emotion. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is emotion. Come on, think about this. It's emotion. There is a war of emotion. We are in a battle of emotion. We are creatures of emotion. I talk about emotion all the time. But, you know, I see it conflict with individuals, mislead them, and bring destruction. There is destructive decisions of emotions that are being made every day. And all over the world. Offense, fear, anger, hatred, jealousy, rage, all of these goofy emotions. Amen? That doesn't mean we won't get them. It means what you do with them. That, that's the whole thing. In Romans 8, would you go there for a moment? Romans 8. We live a life of emotion. Romans chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 1. And we've heard this multiple times. You know, when the Holy Spirit gives you a wide view, a global view of destruction. Think about why people are making decisions. Most of the time it's by emotion. Every desire has an emotion. Amen? There's wars, global wars going on right now because of a desire. Even a person's belief system is a desire. The problem is the enemy loves to play with people so that that desire creates a flawed belief system. And when there's a flawed belief system, there's a flawed perception. And that's where everybody thinks it's the other person. They're not. It's them. They're right. They're wrong. You know, it's not always about right and wrong. There's only one right. Amen. It's about whether you're fulfilling and walking according to the word of God or not. See, emotions cause reactions. They cause what? Reactions. When you react, you sow to the flesh and you reap corruption. It's that simple. Until the day you stop sowing in the flesh, <laughs> hello, we've got to get to that point where we're no longer sowing in the flesh. We're sown in the Spirit. In Romans 8, is everybody there? Oh, glory. In verse 1, what's it start with? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who what? Who do not walk according to the flesh or according to the carnal mind, but according to the Spirit. So there's condemnation. That means condemning. We bring condemnation on ourselves. Everybody get this? We bring it on ourselves. What happens to you, you bring on yourself? 
Because the Holy Spirit is always trying to make a way of escape from something. Always. Even when you get in an accident, you don't think he tried to warn you ahead of time? He did. In verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life, which is what? Anybody remember? What is the law of the spirit of life? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is the law of the spirit of life. If you're not following that law, you ain't going to make it. Why? Because the first thing is to deny yourself. That includes your emotions, your desires, your lusts, you must get out of the way. You, me, and every human aspect of character, desire, and will must get behind the new man. If he's in front of the new man, Christ isn't. This is an area where people blow it. Touch and thought of an agreement, touch anything. Whatever you touch is going to spread. Whatever you speak is going to come. Does everybody get it? So in this, it says in verse 3, or, or, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement, the righteous requirement, so there is a requirement to overcome. If you're not willing to learn, you're not going to get it. You'll easily be swayed. If you're not willing to deny yourself, your emotions, your soul, your desires, and exchange them out for what God wants, you will easily be swayed and used by the enemy. And believe me, it will catch up to you. It always catches up. It never stops. Just because you haven't, re you haven't, something's happened today. You know, many people think that they get away with things. Nobody gets away with nothing. Nothing. Even when you didn't know you did something. And, it, and all of a sudden you're reaping it. Oh, I don't get it. I was a good person. Bummer, you should have been a righteous one. There's a difference. Amen? That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of self. Does everybody get it? They set their minds on the things of what? Me, myself, and I. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Me first. Who I am. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be what? Carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Because the carnal mind is against God. It's enmity. It, it will never submit to God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh or have a carnal mind, carnal way, carnal desires, cannot please God. There is no carnal desire that pleases God, not one. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I want to call this the game. Everyone say the game. The game, G-A-M-E, going after more emotions. Or let's say many emotions. I don't, it doesn't matter. Going after many emotions. Yeah, that brings it more broad. The game, going after many emotions. You know, from the time people wake up, they're going after an emotion. The, the first thing you must recognize where did it come from? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I thinking why I'm thinking? Where is this emotion coming from? Remember, every voice has a emotion, has a desire. Amen? Every thought has a voice. So down that line, there is an influence. It's either from your old man. And you know, memories are still stored, but they're still connected. They have an emotion. And they're going to influence every human being possible. 
Why do people turn into homosexuals and lesbians? Because of a what? A desire. It's a demon. Amen? Why are people doing what they do out there to be rebellious towards God? Because they're looking for another fulfillment because of a flawed belief system and a flawed perception of things. What are they doing? They're putting themselves first all the time. Self first, self first, self first. That's called selfish. Hallelujah. And it's not a fish in the water either. It's just, it's you, selfish. Carnally minded is death, he says. I call it the game. It's called the game of carnality. That's what it is. It's a game. People are playing a game. It's a place of manipulation and holding back and trying to prevent hiding ungodly desires. Carnality. The carnal mind is death. Spiritual mind is life. The law of the spirit is deny self. That means, he was he say? Deny yourself, follow, pick up the cross and fight and follow, right? Okay, so he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, he, he's, what he talks about, I am the way, the truth, and the life, means self, self, the old man, has no access to the way. The self, the old man, has no access to the way of God, to the way of Christ. It has no access to walking in accordance to God's will. Self does not. No access until there's a denial of self. So you cannot walk with God until you get rid of self. Self has no access with the walk of God. And self is the offspring of Satan. It's called the old man. Self has no access with a walk of God. That's why it's your responsibility. My responsibility to move self out of the way so you can walk with God. That is the first thing that is required. Self, no access to the pathway of God. Jesus is known as the way, right, the truth, and the life. Okay, so the way is self has no access. The truth is to fight and stand on the word of truth. So you and I are to fight. If you're not fighting for truth, if you're not standing on what God says and his character, amen, you can't follow. It's impossible. So you are fighting for the truth in everything you do. And the only way of life is to follow Christ Jesus into eternal life. That's the only way. There is no other way. In 1 John chapter 2. Anybody want to play the game? <laughs> the game of manipulation. The game. Going after many emotions. Again, that's what an addict does, to, isn't it? Uh, what is addiction? It's an overwhelming desire. It's called lust. So people just look at addiction as drugs, alcohol, whatever, pornography. Let me tell you, a person can be an addict to TV. He can be an addict to all kinds of things. There isn't. Why? Because it's an overwhelming desire. And what is the person looking for? Fulfillment. And what they're actually looking for in this is a fulfillment to the flesh, not to the spirit. Because the only fulfillment you're going to get from the spirit is from the presence of God. And so what does an addict do? Makes excuses. Lies. Deceives, multiple, you know, does everybody understand it? Deceives themselves, manipulates reasons. Let me, tell, let, me, let me tell you something that is called emotional reasoning. <laughs> emotional reasoning. Blame. Blame. Well, they'll take one, one emotion and blame it. That's why they're doing what they're doing. So it's an emotional shifting. They compromise. 
Let me tell you something that is vitally important to begin to recognize these areas. Not only for your own well-being, for others also. Is everybody okay? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, do not love the world. 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 In other words, do not love the desires of the world. Don't lust the desires of the world or the things in the world. In other words, the way they are. Humanity. Lust. If anyone loves the world, the ways of the world, lust, it, the, the love of the Father is not there. Now, let me share something with you. The love of God is never not present. It's always present. Amen? But the, love, the reception and acceptance of God's love isn't always there. So when that begins to happen, that breach of God's love begins to happen. An individual will try something else. Not even knowing it. This is not done in a conscious arena. Hello, I'm doing it. I know. It's done in an unconscious arena. Next thing, that person is right where they, oh my God, how did I get here? First thing is always self-examination. If you're not willing to take the time to self-examine, you'll always be misled. You may do great in some things and all, all the things you're going to not do good in. In that area of being misled because there will be an emotional battle, that emotional attack, that emotional misleading. Is everybody okay? Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? Is of the world. Again, these are world influence. They are offering of destructive emotional desires, false fulfillments, false perceptions, and it's all in the game of carnality, playing the game. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, is the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they'd have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I've not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Again, he's saying, look, don't desire the world's influence. Why? Because the only thing it offers is destructive emotions. Say, Amen? Now, you got the game of carnality, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. They are emotional, destructive attractions. They're emotional, destructive attractions that mislead individuals. Let me share with you that, you know, the Word tells us, you know, be careful of the doctrines of demons and, and deceiving spirits. These are all attached to these. Because behind these spirits, there is a doctrine. And it's a self-promoting doctrine. I don't want to say it's an encouraging one. It's self-promoting and it was to promote pride. Pride. I'm all right. I can get away with it. I can do this. I'm this. I'm. In other words, that justification. I paid my tithe. I can do this. I worked eight hours. I can do this. I've done this. I can do this. This is where the enemy comes in. It's called self-rewarding also. Self-rewarding. Justification. How many of y'all would rather have a reward from the Lord? Amen? 1 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah.
1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 1, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to what? Carnal. Why? Why is he saying this to them? I mean, some of these people were 10, 15, 20 years Christians. How, 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 you know, what, what's the problem? He's saying, look at because you're still carnal. Why? Because you're still living out of emotion. You're still chasing, you're still playing the game of chasing emotions. He said, you're still babies in Christ, even though you're 10, 20, or 30 years in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able to. For you are still what? Carnal. In other words, you're still playing the game. And what is the game? Going after many emotions. For where there are envy, is that an emotion? Ooh, strife and divisions are among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like what? Men, flesh creatures. We're not supposed to be like that anymore. The old man is supposed to have been crucified. That doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Don't get me wrong. But don't make it over and over and over. Then there's something wrong. Christians still playing the game of carnality, works of emotional desires that are destructive. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 13 and verse 4. Again, we've talked about the difference between love and lust. Amen. God's love. Although the world calls lust love. What is love? Love what? Suffers long. Hello. And is what? Kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, boast of itself, justify itself. Is not what? Puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil. In other words, doesn't react. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, put ups with all things. Love never what? Fails. It doesn't fail. But whether there are prophecies, they will fall. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we, are, we prophesy in part. But when all of that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I what? I what? I spoke as a child. How many of y'all got a voice? How many of y'all got a voice in you? How many of y'all know it speaks? Hello. So even that word spoke means thinks. When I was a child, when I was playing the game, don't children play games? When I was a child who played the game, going after many emotions, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became mature, I put away the game, the childish things. As everybody understand, they put away the game. The game is no longer a part of the new life. There should be no desire for that game ever again to play. Never. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 9. Now, Again, that voice, amen, that voice, the tongue, remember the, the, the word warns us about the tongue. Okay, so people text instead of the tongue. <laughs> the text is the tongue now. 
It's high technology tongue. Digital tongues. <laughs> Luke 9. <laughs> Glory. Next time you get a text, just remember it's a digital tongue. <laughs> Don't play the game, though, on that either. <laughs> you think you're getting away with playing the game? No, it's still playing the game, man. You're just playing with two thumbs now. Well, when you put two tongues together, you know what happens, right? It's a serpent tongue. I mean, you put two uh, thumbs together, it becomes a serpent tongue. Mm. Come on now, you all right? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Verse 18, did I say two tongues together? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that becomes a serpent tongue too. <laughs> Luke 9, verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And it happened. Uh-oh. As he was alone praying, as he was what? He was praying. You know what he was doing? Connecting. That his disciples joined him. Now, wait a minute. What did they do? They joined him. You know, people think, oh, they just showed up. Hey, what's going on? No, they joined him in what? Prayer. They joined him. And then they asked him, saying, why do the crowds say, or Jesus said to him, who do the crowds say that I am? I love when he brings, see, one of the things Jesus always tries to do is bring us deeper. Many people don't want to go deeper. They'd rather just stay in a, Surface level. They don't want to go deeper. They're content right where they're at. And he said, well, what do the crowd say? In, the, in verse 19, and they answered and said, well, some, some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others, they say the one of the old prophets has risen again. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Now he brings that on a personal level. He's bringing connection. Does everybody get it? He's bringing what? Connection. And Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. You're the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And he strictly warned him and commanded him not to tell this to no one. Because Jesus had just been revealed who he really is. And he's saying to them in verse 22, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. But he didn't want anything to interfere with the timing. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Again, there it is again. And take up his cross daily and follow me take up his cross daily again deny yourself laying down emotional desires of lust i mean if you think about it what is lust what is self made up it's made of desire the old man was in the enemy's desire was to lie his desire was to kill and murder his desire is to be deceptive. That's what the old man is all about. It's filled with it. It isn't going to change. It's got to be crucified. And if we're not willing to crucify it, put it back where Jesus said, those who are led by the Spirit, the old man is crucified. So when you are led by the Spirit, it puts your old man in subjection to God Almighty. Not to you. Amen? To God Almighty. 
Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? In verse uh, 24, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever lo loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to man if he gains the whole world and that he himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words. You, you know, people don't realize that when people refuse to obey God's word, it brings to the Lord that they're ashamed of his word. And it goes back to who do they say, who do you say that I am? That's where that relationship is. Listen, you don't want to hurt someone you love. Amen? So in this, our relationship with the Lord should be an area of not only love, but a desire not to hurt him because we're grateful of what he's done. This is relationship, true relationship. No one is ashamed of me and my words and of, of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his fathers and in his fathers and his holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. And there are some people who won't taste death. They're going to die and not taste death. Does everybody get it? <laughs> in other words, they're just going to, oh, I'm home. They're not going to taste death. The terror of death, the torment of death, the frustration of death, the agony of death. They will not taste it. It won't happen at all. Most of them just go right into sleep. Or they even know. Man, when you're that close to the Lord, you know. Paul knew. Moses knew. They all knew when they were going home. Even to this day, many individuals know. My time's up. It's time to go home. It's going to happen any moment. Remember Elijah and Elijah? Amen. He knew. He knew he was going home. And he knew that there would be an inheritance brought down. Because he was in divine order. So everybody got it. Divine order. Oh, hallelujah. Again, they start, this whole thing started off with praying. They were connecting. There's, listen, your prayer time actually is a war. You are battling against emotion. Jesus sweat blood because of the emotion. He was battling tremendously. He had to overcome fear. He had to overcome doubt. He had to overcome everything of the carnal body. Amen? Amen? Because he chose to accept it all of what humanity would go through. He allowed it to be imparted into his body. He knew. He wanted to know what you felt. Not that he ever asked you how you feel. You'll never see in here Jesus asking someone, how do you feel today? Never. <laughs> Is everybody all right? James chapter 1. But because you and I were brought up in the, uh, in the carnal world, we have that tendency to ask, how you feeling? Or did you feel that? Or whatever. Because there's a connection we're looking through for a feeling and an emotion. We love to feel God's presence. It's the only true fulfillment that there is. <laughs> That's it. And you, you feed that fulfillment by the word of God. You maintain it. You put wood, it's like putting wood on the fire. I look at God's word as logs. <sighs> Burn. James chapter 1. Is that where I said to go? Guess I better get there. In verse 12. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. Is the man who endures 
emotional attacks, temptations. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say he's, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is what? When he's what? Drawn away. Drawn away. So the enemy is planting little popcorn that has taste buds on it. Taste on it. Could be caramel. I don't know what. Cheesy popcorns. Whatever. He knows what you like. And he puts it out, out there till it comes to a place where you desire it. Then you need the whole bag. Did you ever see the commercial? I bet you can't eat one. <laughs> that potato chip, Lay's potato chip. I bet you can't eat one. I say that to people all the time about certain things. I bet you can't do that once or whatever. But in that, he, what he does, he entices with a taste of desire, an emotional one. And he brings you images. I mean, there's times when you can almost taste that steak before you even eat it. Amen? When somebody mentions the food, it's like, oh, my mouth is drooling. Why? Because that's how intense emotion is. It is that intense. It can draw you away. Now, there are other things that you just don't like. No way. I ain't eating that liver, you know. I don't understand how people would eat a filter of an animal anyway. It's disgusting to me. It's supposed to be high in this and high in this, and I say down in that. Throw that filter out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, what is the, the enemy pounds you with these desirable things until you finally give in, whether it be drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, anything. These are all emotional, destructive desires. Everything, pornography, all of these are emotional, destructive desires. That's what it is. The end result is destruction, not only to yourself, but to others. And until we begin an area and willing to self-examine, it's not a one-day examine. It's an every attack examine. It's an every desire examine. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking this way? Why am I considering doing something that I know is wrong? Why am I even considering it? Self-examine. That's when, that's when, you know... <laughs> Again, many times, you know that that's coming. You can attack that. But if you're not ready to attack, that's the problem. Many people get sideswiped. They don't get it. Why? Because they haven't put down a full armor of God. They lacked prayer. Or they went to prayer and didn't connect. Listen, you can go to prayer and not connect. Oh, God, thank you for this, 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 and this, and boom. I'm done. Hallelujah. Bless my day. And never really connect. Why? Because it's not a mind connect. It's a heart connect. It's different. This is the core of all desires is in your heart. This is what's happening. That's what Jesus said. He said, man, your heart's deceitful. Be careful. Make sure that those desires are mine and not the enemy's. Then what comes out of the heart comes out of the mouth. Sometimes people just, it doesn't even come out of the heart. It comes out of the mind. Their mind is thinking so much, nothing comes out of the heart. Brrr, motor mouth. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying here, listen, you are drawn away and enticed you're enticed. You're drawn away. You've been pulled away by this. This just didn't happen this morning. The enemy just doesn't show up. Hey, this is the day. No. He lurks, throws that little corruptible dart. It's not forceful. In fact, it's the only part where he's gentle. That's why he's called subtle. And if you're not self-examining, you don't know that you're 
shield of faith. It's got all kinds of darts in it, arrows. You're walking around with them all. But then there's that time when you just, oh, things are cool. And you lay it down. No self-examination. And boom, 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 boom. Everything. You get bombarded. Everything goes through. Next thing you know, I got to have it. I got to say it. I got to think it. I got to eyes number one now. Does everybody get this? That's always a first cue. I first. As soon as you hear I. I. That's always a cue. You better start examining quickly. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. It says, verse 15, when the desire has conceived, then what does it do? It gives birth. Giving birth means it welcomes. It welcomes the presence of evil and its desire. For when it is full grown, it brings forth death. In other words, if you allow it to stay there, it's going to get worse. War of emotion, desi emotional desire is an influence to manipulate control. When an emotional attachment is accomplished by the enemy, you lost control. I'm going to say that again. When emotional attachment has been accomplished by the enemy, you lose control. He has control now until that is cut loose and severed. And he, ta he goes after one member at a time. He knows. Because in me and you, we have many members. He goes after one member at a time, unless you're willing to yield up more. When you begin to see that pride is escalating, blame, excuse, reflections, justifications, you become a defender of the game. What is it? The game of carnality. Lust. And torment. Remember, love, amen, is different than lust. <laughs> is everybody all right? Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Everybody there? In verse 19. Proverbs 27 and verse 19. As in water, face reflects face. So man's heart reveals the man. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Wow. Well, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, and a man is valued by what others say of him. The heart desires reveals the person. Again, that's where your heart exposes who you are. Who are you? Jesus said to them, who do you say that I am? He'd been along, uh, 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 with them long enough where they were to know. He was trying to express his heart to them all the time. Here's my desire. What he kept saying, I come to do the will of my Father. That was his desire. The Father's will. The Father's will. After you and I are born again, that is our desire. The Father's will. The Father's will. The Father's will. The Father's will. That should be the number one your desire. The only way to do the Father's will is the Father's presence. The Father's presence. Then what do you want to fulfill that is by eating the Word of God. So the desires that you and I are to have in this, now the emotions of these desires is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. 
Why? Because it's always bringing us to God. He's always first in our lives, no matter what we're doing. Everything is about first Him, not us. Not about how I feel, not about how I think. Everything is to be gone to Him first. What do you say? What do you think, Lord? You know, he's going to express himself through dream, vision, or his word, or someone else. You never know. Second Chronicles 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. How many of you all know that unforgiveness is emotion? See, people haven't forgiven themselves sometimes. <laughs> That's called self-condemning emotion. And, you know, because we love the Lord, we really beat ourselves up. We, we get on ourselves hard. But then the enemy shows up and, you know, hands you two baths instead of one. I can't believe. But see, if there's truly not a true repentance, if there's truly not a true heart saying, you know what? I don't know if I was right or wrong. I don't know if this was good or not. But man, you know what? Something's not right along this line because of my reaction. Listen, a reaction doesn't have to come through physical. It has to come through a thought. A reaction starts right in your mind how you're going to react. Well, this is what I'm going to do or what you're agreeing with. It doesn't always come through the hands or what a decision is. It starts right in here. And it's been influenced because of release of what's been in the heart of the desire. Now the mind is reflecting what the heart is and going to do it. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 12. Is everybody okay? In verse 12, is everybody there? Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and he said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, does anybody know that that's happening right now? And send pestilence. Anybody know that that's happening right now? Among my people. If my people who are called by name, my name will what? Humble, humble, humble. That means acknowledge. That means confess. That means expose yourself. Don't hide it. Expose it. If my people would humble, expose it, bring it to light themselves, and pray. But the first thing was what? Humble, expose, repent, bring it to light. And not nonchalantly. This has got to be a serious place where people need to get to. Oh, yeah, I, I repented of that. No, you didn't. Esau sought repentance and didn't get it. And he sought it with tears. Tears has nothing to do with repentance. There's got to be a true turn of heart. Does everybody get it? He says, and if you'll pray, hello, and seek my face, and then what? Turn. Because he knows you ain't going to do it on your own. He's going to give you the strength for it. If you'll pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways or your wicked emotions or your wicked desires that are displeasing to him, then I, you, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal them and their land. Now, I want you to know that President Trump today has called today a day of prayer. It is a day of prayer. Praise God. 
we finally have a president out of many years. I mean, some of them called day of prayer, but they didn't show up themselves, you know. This president's sincere about prayer. Today is a day of prayer. Why? This country is about to turn around. Wicked is about to get cut down big time because God is invading this country as an example to the world of his power and his glory and his love. But you know what? Judgment comes first where? In the house. In the house. In the house. The body of Christ. He can't do this unless he's already been judging the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Humble, pray, seek, turn from wicked works enforced by wicked, ungodly, lawless, emotional, destructive desires. In James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Hallelujah. There's something important that we've got to look at this, and it's called taking your responsibility. It's our responsibility. This is a temple of God. We have fellowship in this temple with the Holy Spirit. He wants to lead us to everything that is good. Everything that is righteous. Bring us into deep places. And sometimes he's trying to lead us into a deep place and he's saying, man, you know what? You're not clean enough to come into this place. You're just not clean enough to come here. You need to get cleaned up. Why? Cleaned up from what? Emotional desires. Yeah. Some people wonder why they keep going over the same cycle again because they're not, they're not willing to allow God to clean them up. They're still hiding these things. And James 4, hallelujah, in verse 1, he tells us what? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that were in where? Your members. You lust. You lust living under Satan's torment. That's what lust is. And do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask or you do not seek. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world or with the world's emotional desires is enmity with God, hatred towards God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. But he gives more grace, more way of escape, more God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. God resists the proud. But gives grace to the what? Gives grace to the humble. That means a way of escape, isn't there? You know, one of the things that you and I must do is love truth. We got to love truth. If you're not willing to truly love truth, you're not willing to be truly humble. You can have an act of humble. You can pretend it. You can pretend submission. You can pretend you're doing all the good things that are done. But if that heart, the whole heart, is not in a place of true humility, humbleness, true dependence and love of truth, then there's an open door. Verse 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he's going to what? He's going to what? Flee from you. So how, people are trying to resist, but they resist in a nonchalant way. Like They really don't search it through. They're not really serious in this resistance. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me resist, Lord. 
but they're not submitting to everything else. Like truly being humble. Like truly turning away. Like truly exposing it. Bring that true self-examination. You know what? If you're not right, you know what? You're wrong. And you're right better can be compared to what he's saying, not what man says. Are, well, I'm right in No, you're not. I haven't heard one person stand before God and say, I'm right. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? <laughs> Desires for fulfillment in the old character that fights to, for position of, and control of one member at a time. That's what it does. Again, pride, blame, excuses, reflections, justifications are defenders of the game of carnality. Amen? Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Let's speak it together. Preserve me, O God, for in you I what? Put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Now, what's in your soul? Your emotions. Now, check this out. His emotions now submitted to the Lord. So don't let anybody tell you, especially the enemy, well, I can't do that. It's impossible. No, that's not true. He just said right here, my soul, you have said to the Lord. He just recognized that his soul, my emotions, my desires, my will, you're my Lord. Why? Because he's saying, you're my fulfillment. You're my fulfillment of every desire. You're my fulfillment. And let me tell you, and you've heard me say this before, you must speak that because what you speak is what you eat. Anytime I sense something coming up, I might like something a little bit more than what I should. I have to stop. Lord, you're my fulfillment. Man, do you see that car? Woo! You're my fulfillment. Does everybody understand that? There is a boundary that the, the Holy Spirit has set for me and you to never go over because he knows our frailty. He knows. And we must acknowledge that and be alert to it so that we don't go over it. Lord, you're my fulfillment. My soul, you have said to the Lord, hallelujah, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. And as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my desire. Your sorrows will be multiplied who hasten after another God or another what? Desire or emotion. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Did he give you counsel today? My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Not a deceitful heart, a pure heart. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I'm not going to be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. Why? <laughs> yeah. It rejoices. Because the Lord is before them. There's a connection. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Even the flesh has to submit. For you will not leave my soul in hell or torment. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. For you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? True pleasures forevermore. And we're going to close at Psalm 15. Oh, 
happy days. Oh. Okay. Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, in your presence? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, who works righteousness, who speaks the truth rare. You can't do that without self-examination. He who does not bite, backbite with his tongue or his text. <laughs> Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. And he who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money for drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and all the other stuff. Pornography. Usury. Hello? Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. In other words, he doesn't manipulate. He who does these things shall never, never be moved. What a position. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of participating in the game. The game of carnality, going after many emotions. Lord, we submit our emotions, our desires to you, Lord. You are our fulfillment and nothing else. Everything else is a blessing from the true source of all resources. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise today, Lord, of what you have imparted in us in Jesus' name.